Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Let's lift our hands in worship. Hey, y'all. Isn't the presence of the Lord so beautiful in here? Yeah. Hallelujah. We come to ascribe glory unto the Lord our host. We come to give him praise and honor that is due his name. If you can't just lift up worship one more time. Hallelujah. 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 Demonstrating your power, yeah. demonstrating your glory, Lord. Oh. 
so excited that you guys are tuning in right now. Uh, I am Apostle Clarence Langston, and this is my wife, uh, Prophetess Robin Langston, and we are the senior pastors of Word in Action Christian Center International here in the great city of Detroit, Michigan. Uh, we pray uh, that you have had a great day today, and we just want to decree and declare that if the Lord has given you life, if you're tuning in right now and you can hear us, and you can see us, the Lord has been kind to you, and the Lord has blessed you. You know, and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about uh, tonight. We're really going to talk about, Pastor Robin, the love of God. You know, uh, we here at Word in Action, we have uh, started our fast. Anytime we go into a new year, a new day, a new moment, uh, Prophetess Robin, we should always stop to have a heart of gratitude so that we can have the right attitude about what we're moving into. And the right attitude is being thankful and it is being grateful. And so we just thank God uh, tonight for this opportunity to be here with you guys and to be able to share the good news of the gospel. There is good news. I know there's a lot of bad news on all of your news feeds and social media. And that's why even during this fast, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit tonight, uh, why uh, Pastor Robin and I have shared with you all uh, the importance of uh, shutting down everything around you that is contrary uh, to the will and the purpose of God during this season of fasting. And so uh, we're going to get into that tonight, but I'm going to have Pastor Robin open up with prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We count it an honor and a privilege, Lord, to come back into your presence, Father. Yes. We thank you for being who you are and doing what you do. We thank you, Father, for your presence being in this place. I thank you, Lord, that there is no distance in prayer. And I thank you that you have drawn us all together, Lord, just to edify us, to increase us, Lord, to help us to lay yes. down the baggage, Lord, and to lay it at your feet. Father, we thank you for the refreshing that is coming tonight. I thank you for the rejuvenation. I thank you, Lord God, for the healing, the deliverance, and everything, Lord God, that you are going to give to your people. Now, Father God, use us in the only the way that you can. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. And it is so. And so it is. We decree and declare that the blessing of the Lord make of rich and add no sorrow. What that means is when we put God first, 
God works out everything else in our favor. What is favor? That means things that we can't do on our own, uh, things that we cannot control the outcome of. God, when you put God first in your life, Pastor Langston, how do you put God first in your life? By remembering him in every step that you take, every decision you make. Maybe you have some decisions that you need to make on this year, maybe on uh, this month, maybe this week, maybe tonight you have something that's pending. Well, when we stop, just like Pastor Robin and I just did, when we stop to pray, all prayer is in its simplest form is us communicating with God, us sharing and saying to God, God, you know what? Without you and your son, Jesus, I know this situation that I'm, a, that I'm in right now is not going to work in my favor, God, if you don't work it out. But you know what, God? I know you desire to work it out. So I thank you ahead of time. That's what it means to put God first. Include him in all of your decisions. Include the Lord in all of the events that happen in your life, all of your choices. Before you make a choice, just sim simply stop. It's not a deep prayer. There's not a deep communication that you have to share with God. Just always pray in the name of Jesus and then begin to share your heart with the Father. You know, Pastor Robin, the word of God says God knows uh, what we're going through. God already knows what season that we're in. God already sees. The word of God says that the eyes of the Lord go before us. And we want to talk about that uh, tonight as we are here in uh, the first Tuesday of the year. I'm excited about it because when you look back over 2020 and you look at everything that hit the earth, I was sharing with uh, some of you all this morning how uh, I know several days ago, about four days ago, the report was over 330,000 people in the United States of America uh, have died already this year. I'm sure it's more now, and they're saying that's just from the COVID. Nationally, worldwide, it's over a million. And, you know, uh, Pastor Robin, they say that there is more people that have died from the COVID than people who have died at war, in war. And so when we realize, guys, that this, that this disease, that it is airborne, just like sin, you can't see it, but you see the after effects of it. But God has been gracious, and God has been kind to each and every last one of us. And so as we thank God for this Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the new year, coming into 2021, I want to remind you that the Bible says in Amos 3.7 that God surely does nothing without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets, not self-serving prophets, not fake prophets who put on a persona and try to look deep or act like uh, they're more than what God has called a purpose for them to do or do it for selfish reasons. I'm not talking about false prophets, people who are called to be a prophet, called to speak and decree the word, but their lifestyle is not a witness to the holiness and the awesomeness of God. But we're talking about God has true men and women of God that God has called that have sanctified their lives, and he has them around the world. And tonight, as you're tuning in, we have a word from the Lord concerning the season of 2020 that we just came out of, also now that we are in 2021. In the book of Psalms 37, 23, it says the steps of the righteous man has been ordered of the Lord. And so as God has given us the word of the Lord, according to Amos 3, 7, God has some information that he wants to get to you. The Lord loves you and he loves us with an everlasting love. He doesn't love us because we're perfect. Even in our imperfection, he loves us. And that's why the word of God says in St. John 3, 16, if you can take some of these scriptures down, I'm going to be sharing with you so you can meditate in those scriptures and meditate upon those scriptures during this fast so that you can identify and read for yourself and see for yourself that what we're sharing tonight it is not fabricated. It is not something that is made up to try to control your mind or manipulate you or to make you think that uh, Pastor Robin and I are more than who we are. We are human beings who have been called by God, who walk in an office, 
her as the woman of God, as a pastor and a prophetess of God, those are offices. Me as an apostle of God, that is an office. But we as people, as children of God, we need the same healing. We need the same deliverance. We need to believe God the same way you believe God. There is just a calling upon our lives that as we operate in the offices that God has called us to, he gives us a grace to lead you and to lead you into a greater place than where you're in now. God wants you to know, and he never wants us to forget that he loves us so much that in St. John 3, 16, it says he gave his only begotten son. Pastor Robin, what a way to start off the new year to be talking about the love of God. Honey, yes, absolutely. Wow. I was sitting here thinking when you said this is the first Tuesday of the year, and then you talked about God and he comes to us and he sends prophets. Well, God loved us so much. He sacrificed first, yeah. but not only did he wow. sacrifice first, he also called prophets to give us the first word or the heads wow. up for everything. So God always considers yeah. us ahead of everything else. He always takes care of his people and he does it first. So he, we're not an afterthought right. for him. We are always, wow. he, he, over, he confirms it over and over and over again. We are always at the forefront yeah. of his thoughts, of his purpose, everything he does, mm. he does it for us. And he wants us to know it first so that we can just give him all wow. the honor and all the glory, yes. you know, and it's such a blessing. So honey, when we came into the new year and as we have every year since we've had the ministry and we, we fasted and we pulled away from ourselves because it's easy to kind of get into the momentum of doing things yeah. and just kind of living life and even living life in Christ. You know, we love him and we we worship him and we praise him. But sometimes wow, we don't good. stop and we don't pause and intentionally put him wow. first. And dedicating this period of time to do so, yeah. I have learned year in, year out, as sometimes as sometimes in the years past where you, I've, I've been like, oh, it's time <laughs> for the class again. We're doing it. Even wow. though when I come through and I come out, yes. I come out stronger. I come out Renewed fortified. And fresh. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I'm able to kind of, I see more clearly yes. what God wants me to see. And it's always to my benefit. And it, it just puts things in proper perspective because yeah. I put God in the place he's always in supposed to be in. And I, and I like what you said a moment ago. You said that we just kind of get so busy, even as Christians, even doing ministry, um, that we forget that God desires to minister to us yes. uh, as much as he wants to minister through us. You know, I think about uh, you as a mother. I watch you and you give out so much for our children, you know, school now, they can't go to school. So you're doing homeschooling. So you're giving out and you're giving out. And uh, me as a father, I'm giving out, um, supporting uh, you, uh, working with the children. Uh, we're pastoring. And so there's a lot of giving out. Um, and so many of you all can relate to this because maybe you're a father, or you're a mother, maybe even in a marriage, you're giving out to one another. Uh, as my wife, you support me. As your husband, I support you. And so we're always giving out and we're going through things throughout the year. There's 300, was it 365 days uh, in a year. And when we think about what we've all gone through personally in 2020, uh, all of us have uh, gone through some things. All of us have lost some loved ones or some friends uh, through this COVID and uh, through other uh, ways or means that they have left the earth. And so we've care we carry a lot of baggage. I want you to get this. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of baggage because we keep moving and we keep going. Uh, but it's in it's in and through our time of of fasting um, that we really position ourselves, guys, uh, to be able to cleanse ourselves. There's an emptying out. Uh, when we fast, we 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 deny uh, television. We deny uh, secularism, everything that's connected uh, to what we would want to do for our flesh. So uh, constantly eating and, and drinking pop or coffee, uh, we fast, we deny ourselves socializing, uh, intimacy uh, uh, between a husband and a wife, things that bring us pleasure. Uh, we shut down our physical body um, from the things that we desire or enjoy doing um, so that we can begin to spend that time worshiping God. Uh, praising God and seeking God through prayer. So Jesus put it this way. He says, uh, some spirits, some demonic spirits, some attacks that happen in our life only go away. Some deliverance only takes place 
after repentance. Uh, repentance is the prayer uh, that God wants us to pray while we're fasting. We're denying ourselves the pleasure of life as we position ourselves spiritually to go after God and to seek after God. Honey, you know, I was thinking about it. It's, it's almost like when you and I have casual conversation, mm -hmm. it's good. But when you and I have intimate yeah. conversation, it's better. Yeah. And when we have intimate, it was it was that's the our, heart though. It's from the heart. It's, yeah. It was yeah. it was through our intimacy mm -hmm. that took us to the place to desire to be in a relationship. Yeah. And it was then once we got in a relationship, the intimacy went to another level because I shared more of myself with you because I trusted you more. Yeah. And then I valued what you said in return. Well, this is the same thing we get when we're in God. When we, when we casually talk to God, you know those quick five-minute prayers That's when good. you're on your yeah. way somewhere doing mm -hmm. something else? You say, Lord, I'm not going to forget you, but I don't have that much time to spend with you right now. So your those purpose, your God, purpose God, you. trying yeah. to get it in, but you don't dedicate that time like you should. Mm -hmm. Well, when we set aside this time of fasting, yes. it gives us, a, well, what are we rushing off to do? that we don't have those same things that consume us normally. Mm -hmm. We still have day-to-day -day concerns and affairs yeah, that we handle, that's good. but yeah. we don't have those things that we do extracurricularly, those things that we occupy ourselves with otherwise. And when those things are gone, then the casual conversation that we have with God in passing now becomes a wow. time of intimate conversation, intimate confession. Yeah, we're intentional. Yeah, we, we're sitting there and we're mm -hmm. becoming undone in him. And you know how you, there's that friend you haven't seen for a very long time? And when you finally reconnect, you just share it all. Wow, you're like, yeah. man, you'll be, on a phone, you'll be on the phone for five hours. Like, we haven't talked in so long. I just want to bring you up to speed. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what the fast does yeah. for you. It's like, Lord, I need to bring you up to speed on 2020. Ooh. I need to let you know everything I felt, everything I experienced, everything I did. Wow. And I need to kind of, I need, there's some things I need to rectify. There's some areas I need some healing in. There's some things I need to talk to you about. But Lord, Thinking about it, just the fact that I can sit here in 2021 right. and talk to you about <laughs> wow. what I went through in 2020, that by itself is a blessing. So it's it's our moment to kind of it's to catch up. Yeah. And to do what we need to do and to and try to, yeah, and, to try and, to position and to, yeah, ourselves. And, and, and to purge, uh, because we're we're carrying a lot of garbage. Yeah. Um, and when I say garbage, it's leftover residue of things that you've gone through in 2020. Some of us have gone through things. And you can still remember two, you went through something in, in 2019. Some of you went through something in 1996. Maybe you lost a loved one, a mother, father, brother, sister, something tragic happened. And you, no one, no one taught you or no one uh, showed you or led you um, in the word of God how to um, release that. And you've been making all of your decisions and your choices um, from your pain uh, because yes, that's over and yes, you buried that person or maybe you went through something tragic or something tragic happened to you, uh, but you never healed from it. No one, no one ever taught you or showed you how to get that garbage out of you, that residue, that thing that was left over um, from that trauma or that drama or something that you went through. So what fasting and prayer does, it positions us uh, to empty out, you know, um, I, I, I play my worship all day. Um, even when I'm at work, I'm, I'm, I'm praying on the inside. I take a morning, I always pray in the morning. And, uh, it, you know, in, in that prayer, I'm repenting. Yesterday, uh, we did the prayer of repentance. Today, uh, we're doing uh, the prayer of uh, God's agape. God, we want more of your agape. And we want to, and God help us, teach us to love you more, not love you in our minds. Sometimes we can say that we love God and we mean it from our minds, but we don't mean it from our hearts. The Bible says in the book of Matthew that wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure is. And so wh whoever you're giving the best part of you, um, that's usually uh, who you honor the most. That's usually who you're worshiping the most. Sometimes we don't even mean it. It can be our children. It can be our husbands, our wives. It can be our careers. It can be our money. It can be the things that we have accomplished. We're always taught whatever we find ourselves talking about all the time, whatever we find ourselves investing in all of the time, where we find ourselves not having a problem with going into our pocketbook for, that's where our heart is. And so sometimes, uh, Pastor Robin, we don't realize it until we stop the fast and we say, God, search, search my heart. Search my heart. 
Show me me. Allow me to be able to see myself so that I can make it right with you, God. Because you're the one that keeps me. You're the one that sustains me. You're the one that's been delivering me and bringing me through. When I look back over my life, mama didn't do it. I love mama. Daddy didn't do it. My job didn't do it. Father, it was you. It wasn't my education. You gave me the brains. You gave me the resources to get that degree. And so I thank you for the degree, but the degree is not the thing that's carrying me. It's your grace. It's your unmerited favor. You're favoring me at times when I've missed it with you. So it's during this time that we stop everything so we can focus in on God. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that we see people running after, thinking and believing, Pastor Robin, that it's going to be the answer. If I get a new home, if I get a bigger home, if I get a a new car, if I get a two-car garage, a four-car garage, if I get a new dog, a new cat, if I have a if I have a son, if I have a daughter, if I if I find a husband, if I find a wife, if I and then we get to these different entities and in these different seasons in our lives. And if we're honest, we we kind of still kind of feel as though it's something missing. Or, or honey, you forgot one. Or if I get that title at church, or if I finally get yeah. acknowledged. You know, that's yeah. going to be that thing. And there's so many areas that we seek it. Yeah. We just. And we don't realize it. Yeah. Exactly. We just forget to seek it from the only one that can fill it. I, I, I'm so of the opinion that God has created us where we can pull everything together. Yeah. Life can seem so yeah. perfect. Wow. But if that one piece that he cut out just for him is not fulfilled, if it's not satisfied, if it's not connected, then we'll never, wow. ever yeah. get the level of joy yeah, and no. peace and acceptance that we think we want. Yeah. You know, I'm like, it's like, there can be, a, I always say, there can be this amazingly beautiful picture. It's a puzzle. Wow. You put a whole puzzle together and yeah. it could be a 5,000 piece puzzle and one piece wow. is missing the whole picture looks it's incomplete. Yeah, yeah it's when you look old. at it, yeah. the one thing that always will stand out to you is the piece that's not there, despite the 4,999 wow. other pieces so, that So what are. you're saying is no matter what we do, no matter what we accomplish, no, yes. if the key component. component that brings it all together is missing, and this is going to help so many of us, and this is why we pray and fast, and this is why uh, Pastor Robin and I, since the inception of Word and Action Christian Center, the church that we pastor. Again, if you're just tuning in, I'm Clarence Langston. I'm senior apostle of Word and Action Christian Center. This is my wife uh, who pastors along with me, uh, Prophetess Robin Langston. And we're sharing the word uh, of the Lord for the, this new year as we're coming into it. God has given us um, this word that comes through fasting and prayer and that when we push back our plate, that when we cut off the television and we begin to have an audience with God, he fills up that void. He yes. He fills up every area that we're trying to fulfill and what we believe um, that these different entities, success um, in business, success in uh, my career choice, uh, my ministry. Um, and so all of us mean well in our pursuit of these individual things that we believe is going to bring a pleasure or it's going to be rewarding. And many times, Pastor Robin, it is for a moment, uh, but it's temporary because what God desires to do he does it from the inside out, not the outside in. And so when we pray and fast, let's, I want to read this Chronicles, um, uh, Second Chronicles. Um, Elder Keisha, if you can pull that up for me, Second Chronicles um, chapter 2. Second Chronicles chapter 2. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Second Chronicles chapter 7. Please forgive me, verse 14. Uh, we were going over this on yesterday. And this was the word of the Lord that God gave uh, Pastor Robin and I for the new year, uh, because as we crossed over into the new year, uh, the Lord said it is the year for promotion. In other words, God is recognizing um, those um, uh, that trusted God, those that worship God, those that stayed uh, committed to God, those that went after God, even during this pandemic. We know churches, church buildings were closed, um, but we are the ecclesia of God. We are uh, lively stones, and God has placed his uh, treasure in earthen vessels. And so 
uh, it is important for us to understand if we come over into uh, 2021 that the Lord says that this is a season of revival uh, for his church and his people and those that have desired to seek after him. And so it is so important that we understand that even if we missed it, uh, many people got out of the will and the purpose of God uh, because of fear, made bad choices, made bad decisions, began to live unholy and unrighteously. But I thank God that we have a merciful God. And so God says this is the season of promotion for those that have been obedient because we reap what we sow. But I want you to understand this, that even if you miss it, and that's why I love God, Pastor Robin, that he always makes a way of escape. Yes. If you're hearing us, you still you can still make it right with God. And so the scripture God gave us uh, going into 2021 was uh, 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, uh, verse 14. And we're going to read that uh, in your hearing. And it says, uh, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And this is so important for us to understand that God's desire is always to heal us. God's desire is always to bless us. But I want us to notice that it says, if my people, which are called by my name, he didn't say the world, those, those that have chosen Jesus Christ as their personal savior, he says, he's talking to his people. He says, if my people, he said, will humble themselves. At this time, he was talking to the children of Israel. He says, if they will turn from their way of doing things and return to me, heaven will, will hear and I will heal heal their land, heal their house, heal their earthly. Tonight, we're talking about love destroys the work of the enemy. Love, begin to type that in even right now. Begin to put that in the comment box. Some of you need to put it in your notes. Some of you need to decree it in your own that love destroys the works of the enemy. And we're talking about the love of God. Uh, we are in uh, our second day of the fast since we started. I know we started on Friday night and then we uh, picked back up on uh, Sunday night at 11 o'clock. And yesterday was uh, repentance. We talked about repentance. And today we're talking about the love of God. Agape. God, give me, give us more love, God, for you. Because your word, first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul. So again, uh, Pastor Robin, I shared a moment ago, a lot of times we have it in our mind, but it's not in our heart. And so we're saying things that we're not doing. And then we're doing things that we say we don't desire to do, or we're putting other things or people before God. So it's during this season of fasting, and that's why we're asking God, God, fill us up with your agape. Fill us up with your love. Give us a desire, God, to worship you. Give us a desire to praise you. Give us a desire uh, to live for you. I want to read this a scripture also in your hearing in the book of Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 16 through 18. It says, the spirit shirked, convulsed him violently, talking about a young man that was dealing with a demonic spirit, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciple asked him privately, why couldn't we drive out this spirit? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer and fasting. Some of you have been dealing with demonic attacks in your mind. Some of you have been de dealing with attacks in your physical body. You're dealing with sickness. Your body has been attacked. Some of you, your emotions have been attacked. You haven't been able to share with anybody. You've been crying. The enemy doesn't let you get any peace. It's like a dark cloud has been over your mind. It's like the enemy just continues to remind you that you're not going to cross over, that you're not going to come into all that God has for you. Well, we cancel every demonic voice. We cancel the attack of the enemy right now. And I command the enemy in the name of Jesus, I command him to take his hands 
off of God's property right now. I command him to come out of your ears. I command him to come out of your minds. I command him to come out of your thoughts. I command him to come out of your body. The word of God says, by Jesus stripes, we were healed. I released the healing bomb of God across these airways even right now. And we denounce the enemy. We denounce the world. We denounce all of our bad decisions and choices. I, in the name of Jesus, we close every door that we may have opened up knowingly or unknowingly. And Father, we thank you for healing. And Father, we thank you for deliverance. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for breakthrough. Repentance brings breakthrough. Yes. Repentance brings deliverance. Repentance brings healing. I just read to you out of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. I shared with you earlier that numbers in the Bible mean something. Two is the number of agreement. It is important that we come in agreement with God's word. God and his word are one. The Bible says that the word became flesh and manifest before us, and his name was Jesus. When we come in agreement with God's word, when we come in alignment with God's word, there is nothing that can hinder you. There is nothing that can stop you. It may hold you back. It may hold you up. But I want you to know, yes, you, that there's nothing you cannot overcome through Christ Jesus. There is nothing you cannot break through through Christ Jesus. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. God knows your address. God knows your name. God has the, the hairs on your head numbered. He knows your mother and father. He knows the day that your mother became impregnated with you. He loves you with an everlasting love. I feel the power of God in here right now. And I release the presence of the Lord through the Holy Spirit to go across these airways. I see some people crying. I see somebody, I see people lifting up their hands and lifting up your arms. Shackles are falling yes. off of you even yes. now. Some of you haven't been able to move the way you want to move. Some of you haven't been able to praise God the way you desire to praise God. Those shackles, I commend them. Come off of your hands. Come off of your mouth. Some of you haven't been able to open your mouth and praise God. There's a woman you're listening right now. It's like you go to open your mouth and it's dry. But right now, in the name of Jesus, you're being loose. Praise him, woman of God. Yes, you. You right there. I'm talking to you. Tears are rolling down your eyes. Today is a new day. When we come into a new year, when we come into a new moment, we praise God. Matthew 6.33 says, Pastor Robin, when we seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. All these other things are going to be added unto us. He says his righteousness compared to our righteousness makes our righteousness as filthy rags. That's why we must fast and pray. Cut off our favorite television program. Shut down our stomachs. And not only does it heal us spiritually, but it, it heals us emotionally. It, our bodies begin to heal. We shut down our bodies. Our organs are not working over time eating drinking. We're drinking water and having one meal a day. That's at dinner between five and eight. Give you time to get home from work or whatever that dinner time is for you. But one meal a day, but we're drinking water. Water is a purifier. It purifies the physical body. When we pray in the Holy Spirit, it purifies our spirit man and it gives us revelation. God reveals and he reveals what he desires to heal. That's right. Yeah, Kabasha. And My it's, God. it's so good because mm. when we go back and we realize it, the word tells us no weapon Woo! that is formed against None. us shall prosper. None. I, ne I need you to hear that and I need you to hear it properly tonight. Yeah. Because the weapons yeah. form. Yeah. And the word God again gave us heads up on that. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. Woo! He said the weapon will form. Wow. And for some of us, we look at it. And we think wow. it's going to take us out. We forget wow. the second half of the promise where God says it'll form, but it will not prosper. 
So despite what we're going through, despite yeah. what it looks like, despite what it feels like, yes. despite the way the enemy might just inundate our minds and our ears and just talk and wow. talk and talk, God says, no, Woo! not yeah, so. No. He was like, we, he cuts it off. It is canceled. It Jesus. is done. It is done. done. So in spite of what it looks like, God says, keep wow. moving forward. Keep moving ahead because this thing Jesus. that you've been battling, you are already victorious. Jesus. We're just ready. We are just waiting on the manifestation of the promise. And God's word mm. is so clear. And he is such a gracious and a yes. loving God. And we know that whatever he promises has to come to pass. I need you to get that in wow. your spirit. I need you to type in the yeah. box. It's going to come to it's pass. Going. Yeah, it's going, it's to, come going to, to come to pass. Everything that you're believing for, mm. every bit of healing, every bit of deliverance, every bit of prosperity, every bit of peace that you're hoping your for. Your children, believing your marriage, for, all yes, of Yes, it's done. Yeah. It's done. You keep moving forward wow. and God is going to meet you there. And honey, when you were talking earlier and you were saying, you know, there's so many things that we chase after. We chase after jobs and people and stuff. God says, you know wow. what? And I want you to hear me clearly. That's really the portion wow. you can do. Yeah. But God said, there's always that portion that you need me to do. Wow. And there's the external things that we can make happen on our own. But then there's those internal wow. things that no matter how hard Woo! we try, Teachers. we just can't seem to get that part right. But God said, that's because that's specifically for me. Yeah. It's his design. It's for him to heal because if God made us all sufficient in ourselves, we wouldn't need him. <laughs> wow. And God was intentional. And that's why I just love him so. I love him because he wants, you know what's so good about it is he wants us to love him. Yeah. He's the one, we are accepted in him. And he first loved us. Isn't he, that something? Exactly. He yeah. loved us so much that he knew right. that his love should draw us to him. But when you get there, do you all remember what it felt like before you knew him? Wow. Do you remember that emptiness you had? And maybe at the time you didn't even know you were empty. But once you've had him, wow. you can't live without him. Yeah, because that's inner joy. And he says, this, this joy um, that we have, the, right. wor the world didn't give it to us. Right. It's, a, it's an inner joy. And this joy bubbles from the inside yes. out. Before you can share love, the love of God with anybody, yeah. you must first experience the love of God. And it happens on the inside. And it's so much and it's so great that it bubbles forth on the outside. Yes. And then you're able to share it with other people. We're not talking about your filial love. That's between two friends. Right. I feel you, you feel me. So we hang out together. We do things together. Uh, we're not talking about an eros love between a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, a sensual love. We're not talking, we're talking about an agape love. An agape love will cause a husband and a wife who feel as though they fell out of love still keep their marriage together because God's agape is greater than your filio. Yes. Woo, Jesus. But apostle, I'm not feeling this person. You don't know what this person did to me. And God says, and you don't know what you did to me, but I forgive you. So you have to forgive them so you can experience my agape. Give to them what I've given to you. I free you, you free them. I loose you, you loose them. Come on, somebody, talk to me. What a gracious God. Yes. Watch this. Pull up um, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 again. I want us, we're going to dive in a little deeper. I want us to see um, some of the other verses so we can pull up uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Thank you so much. And let's look at verse uh, 14. It says, then, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. Listen to what God is saying. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and I will restore their land. Verse 15, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in that place. That means when you start opening up your home to live for God, pray for God, to seek after God, to love on God, to believe in God, and to release others, God says, my eyes are going to be upon you. My presence is going to be with you. Woo! Listen to what he says. He says, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer. So God will hear your prayer. Have you ever felt like sometimes God just doesn't hear, hear your prayers? 
I just read to you uh, out of Matthew chapter 6, 16, when that father brought that son who was full of demons, uh, who needed to be delivered to Jesus' disciples, and they couldn't cast it out. You ever prayed and you felt like God didn't hear your prayers? But when Jesus prayed, those spirits came out. And so his disciples wanted to know, why was it different when you prayed for that person? And he says, these kind woo, only come out through prayer and fasting. There are some spirits, there are some things that may have tried to grab hold of you as you've been going through 2020. Maybe it was fear, maybe it was doubt, maybe it was unbelief. Maybe there were some things that made you begin to doubt God or doubt his church or doubt his faithfulness to you because of how you felt or what you've seen. Well, I want you to know that's a spirit that will try to separate you from the love of God. But it is important today as we are fasting for the love of God, we are fasting for more love for God and more love for ourselves and more love for others. What kind of love is that? That's the agape love. And that agape love gives us power. Let's, uh, let's look at uh, Elder Keisha, if you can pull up uh, today's um, fast instruction so I can read uh, this definition of God's agape and we can see it together um, out of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Let's, let's look at this love. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 through 8, it says, love is patient and kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things. Believe all things. Hopes all things. Endure all things. Love never ends. You know how powerful that is? Look at that for a moment. Love is patient. How many of us haven't been patient? Love is kind. How many of us that's tuning in right now, you love God, but you know you, you haven't been kind or you're not a kind person. Love is not envious. You know, some of you may have envied somebody else's blessings or been envious of somebody else's life. Love is not boastful. See, this is the God kind of love. This is the perfect love. All of us are guilty of one, two, or more than these things that we're seeing when we see love being defined by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4, and 8. He was writing this letter to the church of Corinth, to the body of believers in Corinth, because they were operating in gifts. They were prophesying, and they were preaching and ministering the word of God, but they were not operating in the love of God. And one of the things that Apostle Paul wrote in that letter, he says, though you have the tongues of angels... And if you have not love, then you do not inherit the kingdom of God. For God is love. St. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that's why today, uh, Pastor Robin, that's what our prayer has been. Uh, Elder Keisha, while I'm sharing, would you please pull up uh, Mark chapter 12, verse 28. God's love is the only kind of love that fills in the gap, like Pastor Robin was saying, and makes everything right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're looking for a man to do it, a woman to do it, a job to do it. And Pastor Robin, I love how you said it. No matter what we have, no matter, you could be a billionaire, it's still never enough. Something is missing. That's why some people, after they get so much money, they have so much and they're still not fulfilled. So they figure if I give it away, maybe that way I'll, I'll feel fulfilled. Right. So they turn into philanthropists and they start finding entities to give money to and to give money away and to support causes because they have all the money, but they still have problems. They still, so they think if, I, if I'm a part of this or I'm a part of that, then I can seem big to people. People deal with insecurities and and inconsistencies because the love of God is missing in their lives. Well, again, yesterday we prayed the prayer of repentance. God, it's me standing in the need of help. 
I repent, I turn from my wicked ways. Father, forgive me as I forgive others. Your word says that you will hear my prayer and heal my earthly. You will favor me because I have shifted and I've shifted towards you. We're coming into the first of the year. This is what we're saying to God. And God, I'm putting you first with the first praise of my lips. For the next several days, we will we'll come off January the 14th. We are going to be praising God and thanking God and worshiping God and meditating in his word. Everything you need, we put, we put it on the Apostle Clarence Facebook page. You can go to Word in Action Facebook page. If you're having difficulties, you can call the church. We will make sure that you have all the scriptures, all the information, so that you can meditate in the word of God. We're giving you scriptures that's applicable for each lesson or each uh, decree and declaration that we're praying so that we can corporately do it together. But not only that, so that you will be in tune and you will be led and you'll be guided. Again, Psalms 37, 23 says, the steps of the righteous have been ordered of the Lord. We're here as your support. We represent God. We don't represent ourselves. We want to see you come into all that God has for you. And the greatest thing you can come into is the agape of God. The greatest thing you can come into is the love of God. The love of God brings healing in our bodies. The love of God brings healing in our minds. The love of God brings breakthrough. It brings deliverance. After repentance. Woo! See, when we repent, after we repent, we return to God. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, will repent, have a changing of mind, turn around from the crowd you're hanging with, the people you're hanging with, the things that you're doing, maybe you've been putting your children before God, your mate before God, your business before God, whatever it is, God says, put me first, give me first place. The Bible says that God is a jealous God, Pastor Robert, and God wants to know that you know he's your creator. God wants to know that whatever husband you have, he gave it, whatever wife you have, he gave it, whatever child you have, he gave it, whatever education you have, he opened up the door of opportunity. He gave you the brains. God wants to be first. So when we come into the first of the new year, we give God first fruit of praise. We give God first fruit of worship and honor. That's why we're fasting. We say, God, we're doing this for you. We want you to know that we know that it's because of you we came out of 2020. It's because of you we came through 2020. It's because of you we're now here in 2021. And when we do this and we lift up our hands and we and we lift up our arms and we and we open our mouths and, and we we push back everything that we desire. We push back people for, for a season. Many of you all shouldn't even be on social media. You should, this is a time of fasting. Cut it down. Outside of connecting to us doing prayer, cut down that social media. You need to be focused in the things of God, unless, of course, that's your business, and I understand that. But just being on, just talking, and we're shutting down, and we're saying, God, you have, you have my attention. And I don't know about you, Pastor Robin, if 2020, last year, didn't get your attention, if all those people dying, if everything being shut down still hasn't got your attention, all those people died, my only prayer was that they were saved. My only prayer was that they repented. My only prayer was that they gave their life to God. Because if they did, absent from the body and present with the Lord, heaven is real, hell is real, life after death is real. Don't let anybody fool you. I know everybody's prophesying and talking about big cars and big homes and all that's wonderful. God doesn't mind that. Put him first. Seek first the kingdom of God. Give God first fruit even in your offering. God said at the first of the year, he wants a whole of something, a whole check, whether it's a whole week, a whole month. You give him the whole of it. You take the whole thing and you say, God, you are the one that gave this to me. I've been asking as many of you all that will for your first fruit. To stand with Pastor Robin and I, we've already sown our 2021. I'm going to do it again on the last Sunday of this month. And I want as many of you all that will, though some of you may be able to do it tonight, some of you may be able to do it sometime this week or sometime during this first month. But I want you to stand with us and sow that $2,021 seed. And then some of you may be able to, can't do that, but you can sow $1,000. And $21 seed as your first fruit. We're coming into the power of agreement and we're saying, God, I know that you're going to bless the rest of the year. I know you're going to bless me mentally, physically, emotionally. You're going to bless my resources. You're going to bless my finances. And so, God, I'm coming in the first of the year and the first fruit represents the tithe. It's a tithe for this new season you've allowed me to come into. 
The Bible says in the book of Exodus that God told the children of Israel, every time you enter into the land, you enter into a new place, you enter into a new day. God says, I want the first of that. Woo, shabababaka. See, Pastor Robin, this is so powerful. Uh, this is just so real, the love of God toward us. And so God instructs us not to hinder us, not to hold us back, but to bring us into a greater expected, uh, expected end. That's what the word of God says. It is, honey. And you know, I wanted to remind everyone, if you think about it, when when God brought them off of the ark, when he brought Noah off of the ark, the first thing wow. Noah did was he first built thing. an offering and he gave God yeah. his best offering. Wow. Moses, Abraham, wow, all everybody. Of them. Yeah. Whenever God brought them through something, Ooh. what they did, they acknowledged and remembered that it was him. And it had to be costly. Oh, yeah. It they, was weighty. Yes. Yeah. Even, I mean, if you go back, even when Noah got on the ark, he pre-planned. Wow. He said sure did. He, had, he brought two of everything, but he brought an extra wow. to give as That's his good. offering when he got there. So he knew. That's good. So we wow. know. And, and, and I would venture to say that God has brought all of us Woo, Jesus. through yeah. a lot in 2020 and he gave us the opportunity to be here wow. today and just in, in and of itself that's enough where it's like guys like build me a special place yeah. have a special place for me but bring a special offering that is a sweet special smelling offering. aroma that's right he wants a sweet fragrance to come from it because he wants to know that it costs you yeah. something that you recognize what you're doing and let me tell you all don't, there's nothing we can do, nothing no. we can give that can outdo God. What price tag do you put your life on? What, wow. what, what, what do I, what does Robin cost? I don't know what I cost, but I know wow. that whatever seed I can give would never amount no. to what God has done and what God is doing and what I'm just believing yeah. him for. I'm believing him for a prosperous and blessed year. And I know that every seed that I plant, God's word has wow. told me it has to produce has a harvest. To, yeah. And it will, and it and it's always honor, has. You know? and, and, you know, and, and it's so true, because that's what God's word says. But when we look at, like what you're saying, this is a seat of honor. Whether yes. God doesn't do anything else or not, exactly. this has nothing to do. This is not like the lottery. I do this, and then God's going to do this. Exactly. God has already done. We're honoring him. He allowed us to be alive yes. in 2021. Whatever career you have, whatever job you have, whatever means you have, unemployment, whatever it is that you have, God allowed it. We have breath in our bodies. So with this, what this represents is not only what God's going to do, woo, shababaka, but this represents what God has already done. Yes. I give you the first of the fruit. So whatever's going to come in my way, whatever check's going to come my way, increase from my job, unemployment, disability, retirement, God, I would not be getting it if, I'm, if I would be six feet under the ground. I wouldn't be getting it. But I'm here. So I honor you and I recognize I'm only here. Because of your grace. That's first fruit. Yes, We're yes. recognizing it. So again, those of you that's getting in your first fruit, make sure in January, this is the first of the month, make sure. That's why we give them the first of our praise, the first of our worship. Yes. We give them the first of everything. That's why we're fasting and praying. God wants to know that we know that he is the one that rewards us. He is the one that delivers us. He is the one that brings us through. He is the one that works everything out in our favor. And he is the one that causes us to always come through. And then he not only allows us to come through, he puts us on top of situations. There are so many of us that during this fast, God wants you to see what he's done for you because some of us had to repent from murmuring and complaining because we just, had, we sometimes the enemy trick us not to realize how good God has been because you're looking at somebody else and you might not know that maybe you weren't not supposed to live through 2020, but you missed, you missed that email. Woo! You missed that email that 2020, you weren't supposed to stay alive. But the song says, somebody prayed for me. Somebody took the time to pray. Somebody's intercession covered me. I was supposed to leave here, but God said, not so. Eh, Shabbat so we, we can't pay for a miracle. We can't do anything. First fruit is a sign of honor. You said it best when Noah came out of that boat. First thing he did, set up an ark. When Abraham came into new land, every time he came into a new place, he built an altar. And they put a sacrifice. Every time they came into a, 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 a new moment, they built an altar. The altar and the sacrifice is saying, you ready for this? God, I'm sowing this for what I want you to do. 
this first fruit is saying, God, I thank you. God, I thank you yes. for what you've done. God, I'm not sowing this for no mansion. God, I'm not sowing this for no car. God, I'm not sowing this for you to turn around a situation. I know because you're God and you're my daddy and my alma and you love me, you're going to turn around. And yes, I can sow and believe for harvest, but this is my first fruit. This is my thank you. Yeah. Woo! Come on, somebody. <laughs> this is my thank you. This is my thank you. So praise God. Listen, I'm going to read this last scripture, and then we're going to take our tithes and offering. And then I'm going to let you go and have your dinner, have your prayer time, and I'll see you in the morning. So let's go to this scripture. Mark, let's go to Mark chapter um, 12. Mark chapter 12. Thank you. Mark chapter 12. And let's look at verse, let's start at verse 28. Mark chapter 12, verse 38. Then one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? This is a Pharisee talking to Jesus. They were always trying to entrap him and to see if he would give the right answer. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Did you hear that? There is no other commandment greater than these, that we love God and we love ourselves so that we can love others, mm -hmm. love thy neighbor. And that's our prayer today uh, for our fast. And I want you to know that when you trust God, God will do some incredible things for you. We are in the first week of the, of the year, and I have uh, someone I'm going to bring on in a moment that's going to share a testimony of what God has done for him. I called this young man on the phone, and I began to minister to him about what I felt God wanted him to do concerning his education, to go back to school. He was putting some things off. He was trying to take care of some people in his life, and but God gave me a word. God convicted my heart to share with him as a spiritual father, the importance of getting back in school. But what I did not know was that he owed a bill and he had to pay this bill before he could get back in school. And it, had, it was bothering him so much because his spiritual father had shared with him that God was going to bless him through his education. And the enemy was trying to make him feel like he was going to be a failure because he knew he did not have this money to get back in school. But I had I had put a demand on him and I said, son, I want you to get back in this semester. And he didn't share with me that he had a bill that he owed. But right before Christmas, several weeks before Christmas, he brought me a C and a letter saying how much he honored me and respected me. And he wanted to be like me. And I wanted him to share his testimony because God honored him and God really blessed him. He had went through some hard things several months ago where he went through some physical pain, he went through some emotional pain, and he was going to a psychiatrist because she was talking him through some things that he had experienced that brought some trauma to his life. Well, he happened to be there on, I'm gonna bring him on in a minute. He happened to be there either today or yesterday. I just heard this testimony today. And while he was there in the the psychiatrist, the psychologist was talking to him and he just began to share what was bothering him. And he said to her that I had a conversation with my spiritual father on this week. And he began to expose to her an intimate conversation that we had. And his desire was to do what I had shared with him concerning his education, but he simply didn't have the money and that it bothered him. But he was believing God because he trusted his prophet, because he believed his prophet. This is what he's saying to the psychiatrist, guys. 
I want you to hear this. Yes, you, because some of you, you're going to have this testimony that he's going to share. And I'm going to bring him on and he's going to share it in his own words. But the psychiatrist got so convicted by his faith in, in the man of God that she said, your faith has moved me. And I believe that it's going to happen for you. And she said, I know it's going to happen because I'm convicted to give you the money. Your faith has moved me to pay off your debt for school. Come on in, Joshua Wright. Come on in, son. I want to hear the story. Unmute. Come on in. Uh, make sure you hit the unmute. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Praise God. I just want to give honor to God. First, I want to give honor to you and pastor. Just thank you guys so much. You don't have a clue. And man, that's just, I'm still just so amazed. I'm still just lost for words because it's just, man, God is just, he's just so good. He's so faithful. Uh -huh. He's so faithful. And it's just, it been, I went, I was full time 2018, 2019. I took a semester off and an incident that happened to me, which really God was trying to get my attention that like that after the incident, I should have been right back period. And the enemy came in and I really, during this fast, God really has showed me where the enemy snuck in, where I got way too much, way too quick. And I got a good job that was paying me good. That was promising promise me all type of positions. And I got a car and I was just taking care of, trying to take care of my family and all type of stuff like that, which I just found out the other day where God was revealing me. So I called, you called me a couple of days ago and you were just telling me like, son, you've been about on two my days ago, wasn't it? About two, two days ago, I called you. Sir, yeah. You called me was like, son, you've been on my heart. You need to get back in the school full time. You don't need to be playing no more games. You don't need to be taking small class. You need to be back in school full time because the job you have right now, they may be promising you positions, but your boss may be put out and another boss may come in. You don't have a paper trail there so they can put you out just because you don't have a paper trail. You're so a young I, was I was sharing with you, um, you were saying that, you know, they're paying you good. And I said, yeah, but in the future, you were saying they're promising all these promotions. And I was saying to you, yes, that manager may favor you now but if right. another manager can come, that person can die. And if you don't have the paper trail, if you don't have the education, they'll move somebody else into that same position that has the education and move you out. And so God has just put that in my heart to really push you say, hey, son, get that education, get that piece of paper. I believe that God really had that for you. And so that's what you're sharing right now. Yes, sir. That's exactly mm -hmm. what you said. So I got off the phone with you. Started making moves, so I called my counselor, like, okay, well, I'm ready to get back full time. I don't care if I got to fly back down to Florida. I don't care if you want me to do online. So everything started to work out. Then, boom, I got hit with a $1,400 bill. Mm -hmm. So I just had hip surgery in November, and everything started to slow down for me because I had hip surgery. So my my um, company I worked for, they was on me back pay. My checks haven't been coming. So wow. everything. So no down. money no money coming in. No money coming been in. Tight. Okay. Been tight. So everything started to slow down. So I just began, I'm like, the man of God said it, so I know it's going to be there. The man of God said it, so I know it's going to be there. And I know I sold a seed a couple months ago to him. Mm -hmm. So you were on, and I know I owe one of my friends some money, and you were on, and you called for a seed. And I called him. I said, man, look, I know I owe you this money, but I got to sell this seed. Because I know no, that wait seed. Wait a minute, wait, wait. Let me get this right. I was on, and I called yes, for a seed. Yes, sir. And how old are you, son? 20 years old. 20 years old. I was on ministry. I called for a seat. You didn't have a seat. You yes, didn't sir. have the amount, but you called your friend yes, to sir. borrow it so that you can yes, sell it. Now, let me get yes. this right, because I know some people borrow for gas. Some people yes, borrow for groceries. Some people even borrow to buy clothes and tell their friends they're going to pay them back. You borrow to sow yes, a seat. Yes, wow. sir. Come on, talk to yes, it. Wow. Because so I, I know that seed meets the need. So I said, man, look, I know that... <laughs> That you probably don't have, but I need to sow this seed right now because I'm believing God because the man of God said it. So I know I was just thinking about Robert Roy. I was thinking about Devon LaRoya. I was wow. thinking. About, so you oh, were thinking oh, about, wait a minute, let me stop for a moment. You were thinking about Devon and LaRoya's testimony. Yes, sir. Because I brought them on like I brought bringing you on now. Because yes, I, I want to encourage people to understand that, that this works, it's honorable. And so I yes, brought sir. Robert Roy on. You heard his testimony. So you said you were believing what I was yes. saying because you heard that testimony. Woo, come on, son. That's my yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I believed and I kept believing. And, and we was fasting and the enemy kept just coming against me. Like, no, nah, you're going to be a failure. Because I remember you telling me you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to get 10 years down the line and be stuck. Yeah. And you come to me crying 
And what you don't, and another thing you said that really impacted me is like, as a spiritual father, you don't want to say that I never told you something or I never told you nothing. You now, when I applied to say, okay, I'm about to hit it hard, about to go back full time, no excuses, no nothing. What you didn't know, what I didn't know was I had, boom, here a $1,400 bill that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. So today I'm talking to my psychiatrist and like, she always asks, how's your pastor? And I'm just telling her like, everything good. Yeah, I got a word from him. Uh, that I need to get wait, back to Wait, 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 hold on. So you're talking to your psychiatrist about me? Yes, sir. So she yes, asked sir. you how I'm doing because you always talking about me to the psychiatrist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, wow, that's 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 something. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> so, so I'm telling wow. her, I'm like, yeah, I got to the other day and I got to get back in school full time. And I got hit with a $1,400 bill, which I'm not able to pay right now, but I just believe God. And I'm, I got faith because what he said, his words don't fall to the ground. And out of nowhere, like she's a spiritual woman. She's just, she's not a doctor. She she's a spiritual woman. She's a psychiatrist, and natural, but she's a spiritual woman. Out of nowhere, she just started speaking in tongues. Out of nowhere, the spirit just hit wow. her. In, in your doc, in your doctor's appointment. In her <laughs> office, she just started speaking. Out of nowhere, all did, she said wait a was, minute. You done made her come out of you done made her come out of character. She's supposed yes, to be doing that. You got her speaking in tongues. Your faith didn't ignited her. She's speaking in tongues. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right, go ahead. Oh. So out of nowhere, she just said, well, God already did that. So what's next on the agenda? I said, yes, he did. She said, yeah, God already done did that. She said that God just put it on my heart when you he said about faith and how you honor your man of God and listen to your spiritual father. I'm the one that's going to get $1,400. Wait, now she don't know me. She does not know you, sir. She just met you because she's your psychiatrist. Yes, sir. And she said, because you, you wait, 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 let, 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 let me get this right. Say that last part again. She said, she what said, now? Because of your faith, God's put it on my heart because of your faith and the way you honor your spiritual father and the way you listen your, to us. Wait, wait, two key things. She said, your faith right. yes, and sir. the way you honor. Oh, yes, Shabbat. Yes, you are exposed. I told you it's going to be the year of exposure. People yes, are going to see special yes. things about us. She saw that about you and she saw you were honorable and she knew you were good ground and she wrote you a check and paid off your school. She gave, actually, she said, follow me to the bank, got the $1,400. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. She didn't give you a check. No, she said, follow me to the bank, gave me a $1,400. I hope y'all hearing this. Yes, sir. I hope y'all hear the psychiatrist. She don't know him. She didn't know his family. It's not a family friend. No, sir. She's a psychiatrist. Yeah. Trained yes, psychiatrist. Yes, sir. She said, your faith yes, and sir. your honor caused her yes. to start speaking in tongues. She was saying, you ain't know that ignited her and she said follow me she went to the bank got cash yes, money somebody needs to hear this because somebody is going to get some contract somebody yes, is going to get some money somebody is a doctor's report is about to change because of the seed of first fruit that you sow and the honor that you have for your leaders watch and see what god is about to do some of you need to stay away from people who don't have faith in God. You need to stay away from people who do not believe in your leaders the way you believe in your leaders, even if they go to the same church. They will hinder your blessing. They will hinder your flow. Yes. They will damn it up. They will jam it up. He's this young man, 20 years old. I gave him a word about school two days ago. He shared it with his, his psychiatrist because he didn't see how he was going to be able to do it, but he held on to the words I gave him, and he began to say, but I believe God. He's in the appointment. I believe God, and I believe my prophet. And she said, because of your faith and because of your honor for your leaders, I'm, I'm paying it off. God told me to pay it off. I want somebody to hear that because somebody's going to get their debt paid this year. Somebody is going to get, somebody's going to favor you. Somebody's going to buy somebody a car. Somebody's going to give people down payment for a home. I'm seeing open doors, but it comes from your obedience and it comes from your honor. Woo! Y'all better stop listening to folks. I don't care if they go to your same church. You better stop listening to folks that tell you don't take all that. That's why they're not experiencing these kind of, that's a miracle. Yes, Pastor is. Robin. Woo! Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I mean, Woo! What, Jesus. what do you do with this? <laughs> wow. You have some secular person who you just met who wow. barely knows you. Wow. Number one, who had to be intrigued by your faith. Wow. Because the, the fact that she even asked about your wow. man of God on a regular basis is interesting. Wow. But then the fact that when you share your situation with her, yeah. she's just moved to become wow. undone because professionals Jesus. just don't start praying in the spirit in front of their clients. Especially a psychiatrist. Not at all. And let they me know share. how to keep their composure all the time. What the Lord showed me, honey, when you were talking, the Lord just spoke to me. He said, son, I did that because of you. I said, huh, Lord? 
He said, I did that for him because of you. And I said, huh, Lord? And he said, had you never be obedient, if you wouldn't have released that word on his life, he would have never had a convicted to, a conviction to share it with her, how he was feeling about what you said. But because you, man of God, you, Apostle Langston, that I called to decree the word of the Lord, because he obeyed the voice of the prophet, that happened. Some of y'all better hear what I'm saying right now. Some of you better start getting your heart ready to give God that whole first fruit check. I live by this principle. We eat out of the hand of God. Yes. We eat out of the hand of God. Hear yes. us today. This is no game. Stop. Get, get away from those games and get away from people telling you that's stupid. Ain't nothing happened for you. Are you still breathing? I said a moment ago, some of you shouldn't be alive, but you trusted in the prophet. Yes. And maybe you said the, the first fruit that you sowed last year. Oh, Shabbat. Yes, I hear you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is talking to me right now. He says, some of you slayed death with the seed, the first fruit that you gave at the beginning of last year. 2020, we came in and you sowed in January. You sowed the first fruit seed. And maybe people have been asking you, what things did you get? What stuff did you get? And you missed that God, your seed gave you life and it rebuked that corona that could have took you out this year. So we know we none of us know what our obedience. Yes. It's not the sacrifice, it's the obedience. Let me share this with you, son. And you always hold on to this before I let you go. Sure. God's gonna continue to bless you the same way as you continue to honor the voice of the prophets that God has put in your life. She sure. paid that off because of your honor. When I spoke to you, you could have been like, Yeah. I hear you, right. but I, it, it, this is how people talk under their breath. I bet you, you ain't going to pay the bill, Pastor Langston. You don't know what I owe. That ain't what you did. It bothered you because you knew you owed, but you said within yourself, if he spoke it, I believe God. I don't want to be a failure. Whoa, that was powerful. I heard you said, I don't want that bothered you. I just spoke it two days ago. Yes, sir. And you began, it bothered you so much. You shared it with your psychiatrist. You exposed your frailty. And she didn't see it as a weakness. Right. She saw it as your faith and she saw your honor. And because of that, she paid off your school. Y'all better get ready. Those of you that believe, listen, let me share something with you guys as we get ready to, to move on. Make sure again, before this month close out, get that $2,021 seed in the ground at 1021 Sacrifice, stretch yourself. If not, get a whole check, get a hold of something. It's between you and God. All we do is teach you, lead you. I'm not one of those, I'm not one of those fake preachers or prophets. I'm just making you, giving you all your wish lists. It sounds good. And so you get all excited and give out of emotion. No, sound word, sound guidance, sound direction. First fruit is real. Honor God. Be thankful. Be grateful. Thank you, Josh. You cut Thank off your camera and I love you, son. We love appreciate you. you and we celebrate what God is doing in your life. But there's somebody that need to hear me. Yes, I'm talking to you guys right now. You hear me. You hear what I'm saying. This is your moment. Make sure that long as it's by the end of January, get that in. Make that, God, I'm sowing this first fruit. I'm sowing the 2021. I'm sowing the 1021. That first fruit is for the whole. I'm giving a whole check. I'm giving whatever it is. It's between you and God. But do according to your faith. But it's a stretch. Sacrifice. Wonder what God has done for you already and what God's going to do. Well, anyway, with that said, that's for our first fruit. Well, it's time to take tithe and offering. Guys, let's, whatever we do, we're in the first of the year. Don't forget God in his tithe. Let's get that tithe in even now. Start tithing. Uh, put up those entities of giving. Start tithing. Let's get the tithe in. You can go online and give it yact.com. You can give through the cash app, Word in Action. You can go to text to give. You can also giveify. Go to PayPal. Get the tithe. Get the Lord's tithe in. You heard the testimony. When you honor the word of God, when you honor your prophet, I'm talking about God will prosper you. God will bless you. God has doors that he's going to open up for you this year. The Bible says when we bring the tithe, the whole tithe, don't, don't take God's tithe. Don't try to figure out things on your own and say, God knows my heart. Yes, he does know your heart. We do what we desire to do if we love God. Get that tithe in the ground. Release that seed. I want every last one of you. I've been talking about that jubilee. We're coming into jubilee. We're celebrating. It's a year of restoration, revitalization. Begin to get that uh, 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 in the ground as quickly 
as you can. Begin to get that seed in the ground. Please, um, Elder Keisha, if you can put that offering first fruit back up for me, please, so I can show the entities that they can call and word in action and begin uh, to give now. So get that $50 Jubilee seed in. If you don't have that, begin to show something, but always give the tithe first. Get the tithe in. Begin to go to yag.com, word in action. Get the seed in. Support the work of ministry. Support yes. God. We're praying today, God, give us more love for you. Give us more love for ourselves and more love for others. If you love God, then that's why you give to God, because you trust God. He says, I'll open up the windows of heaven, Pastor Robin. It's like he did for this young man. That's right. Pour you out. Room. So much blessing, you'll have room to receive. Luke 6.38 says, give, and it shall be given. Press down, shaken together, shall God cause men to give in your bosom. Begin to sow. Begin to get that tithe in. Sow that Jubilee seed, that $50 seed. Those of you that are sowing a seed of anything to me or Pastor Robin, you want to sow that personal seed, you can also put that up now, that love seed. You say, hey, I want to send a love seed to... Also, Clarence Langston, you go to dollar sign, Clarence Langston Jr., you go to dollar sign, Robin Langston. We love you guys, and we know that God desires to do more for us than we can ever do for ourselves. Let's begin to get our seed in. Let's begin to praise God and thank God as we give our time. Well, honey, while, while people are giving, I just want to share. Joshua's testimony blessed me so in that that's one of those unforeseeable wow. blessings. yeah. You know, some things you can expect, yeah. some things you can look for. Wow. That one right there, wow. that wasn't one that we could have expected yeah. or that he could have expected. And it's so amazing when those moments come because yes. it just takes you to the place and it just reminds you, man, Woo! God is awesome. You don't he know gonna, what you're going to do. He's going to find a way <laughs> wow. to do it. You know how people say you can't, you cannot outdo God no, as can't. much as you can try. No. You can't anticipate but it. You, gotta you believe. can't expect it. You just know. That is right. coming. But you got to believe. You have to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe. Yes. You know, I think, what's the name? You really touched me with that song, New Year's Eve, uh, Larry Callahan and Selective God. When they were singing that song, just believe. Just believe. Mm -hmm. just believe. You have so many believers who don't believe anymore. They don't believe God. They don't believe uh, their pastors. They don't believe their spiritual leaders because he, he received because he believed. He didn't receive just because I said it. I could have said it and he didn't believe. Right. He believed. And because he believed, he shared his belief and his conviction with his psychiatrist. And she paid the debt. I believe. You believe? I believe. You all believe? Type that in. Somebody, if you believe, begin to type that in. I believe. I believe. Begin to sow that seed. Wow. Somebody, somebody needs to sow. Yes, Holy Spirit. I saw the clear as day. A $500 I believe seed. Whoever you are, that's between you and God. A $500 I, I believe. I believe. So make sure you get that tithe in. Make sure you get that offering in. And make sure that you get your first fruit in before the end of the month. It's the first of the month. I mean, the first of the year. It's January. We give God first fruit. Ain't God awesome? He is awesome. If you're not saved, you want to give your life to Jesus. You're ready to repent. You heard that scripture say, I want to repent. I'm saved, but I have been living saved. I need to get it right with God. I want you to repent. God said, when you repent to him, he'll hear and he'll heal. Maybe you're not saved and you heard us ministering about the love of God. And you said, I want to give my life to God the Father. I want to receive his son Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Call that number. Put that number up that they can call. We're... We would love to pray for you if you need prayer for anything. I don't know, Pastor Robin, what goes on in people's minds. I want you guys to hear this for a moment, that when we're in a church building, people run for prayer because yes. we need prayer. But now that we're connected through social media, we're still here. And you can call the number. Don't try to go through this by yourself. You're not alone. Pick up that phone number. And just ask for prayer. You don't have to give your name. You don't have to give your information. If you're ashamed, just say, I want prayer. I want prayer for this area. I want prayer for salvation. Or I want, I want the repentance prayer. Whatever it is you want prayer, we'll pray for you. You don't have to give us your information. We want to make sure that you're blessed. We know the power of prayer. Call that number right there at the bottom of the screen. 
864-5500. What a powerful night, Pastor what Robert. What a powerful night. Wow. Love destroys the work of enemy. God's agape love. Wow. And honey, I, wow. I'm just full. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm full of it. And wow. what, what, what's so amazing about it is how God says to love me first, then love yourself. So that wow. you can properly love others. That's good. And that's what we're doing. That that is what our wow. mission is today. Yeah. To get back to the place to say, Lord, I just want to love you more. Mm. I love myself. And because I'm comfortable sure. in loving you and loving me, now I can do what you called me to do and to give that love to other people. Wow. What an amazing God we serve. Mm. Bible says angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Man, what a powerful testament. I just keep thinking about, guys, I keep thinking about that 20 years old, that 20 year old testimony, Joshua Wright. I had a vision that he was supposed to be in school full time. I had that conviction and I called him as a spiritual father to say, son, and here it is. He received it. He believed it. Are you hearing today? Second Chronicles 20, 20 said, believe on the Lord thy God. Wow, you shall be saved. Believe on his prophets and you shall prosper. Well, we love you. God bless you. How you start your year is how the year is going to go for you. Trust God. Make sure that you're tithing. Make sure that you're sowing. Make sure you get your first fruit in. God is a sustainer. God is the life giver. Mwah. Love you so much. Got some information. We want to get to you as we get ready to leave. Um, you know, uh, man, somebody's birthday is coming up. It January is. the uh, 15th is someone that we honor and love dearly. Uh, you can put that information up, Dr. Martin Luther King, and we celebrate him on Monday the 18th and so we have a powerful uh, a powerful um tribute that we're putting together we want you to tune in january the 18th at eight o'clock p.m look how far we've come and we want you to see um just the sacrifices that this great man has made dr king said a man has never lived if he has never lived to sacrifice for a greater cause than himself and his own family. And he thought outside of the box. Dr. King lived outside of the box. And for that, we honor him. So again, his uh, birthday is January the 15th. And uh, we're gonna celebrate him. They have uh, made a day of honor for him. And that is on January the 18th. And we are going to have a special tribute. We're going to honor Dr. King. We're going to look again how far we have come. We may not be where we want to be, but we are not where we used to be. Just think about that. Back then when they were marching at Selma and boycotting the buses and all of those things, they couldn't even, we couldn't even drink from the same water fountain. As, as African-American, you can drink from the same water fountain as a a um a caucasian can you pull it, please keep that up there um for me elder keisha thank you we could not drink from the same water fountain as a um caucasian uh brother or sister now uh, we can go to the same churches that wasn't even allowed um and just think that wasn't that long ago uh, when he was uh marching when he did i have a dream speech where god gave him a vision that things were going to change that was in 1968 wow that's amazing. I was born in 1969. Right. So that was a, you know, a year before I was born. So anyway, we're going to honor him on that uh, day. So make sure you get your family together, get your friends, let everybody know. Uh, make sure we're going to put this um, flyer up. Make sure you tag it. And I want each one of you guys to kind of share how you feel about Dr. King and the difference that uh, he made and uh, how appreciative you are. Uh, because of somebody else's sacrifice. And so we honor him and we thank God uh, for Dr. Martin Luther King. He wasn't only a civil rights leader, but he was an apostle and a prophet in his own right. Yes, 
So we honor him. So anyway, thank God for that. So we love you guys and we look forward um, to seeing some of you on tomorrow uh, morning for our All Things New and, and uh, on Thursday, January the 14th, we're going to be ending our fast. So it's going to come quick, guys. It's going to happen before you know it. And then on January the 15th, we're going to be having consecration of those that are already in leadership. We're just going to be uh, having a, we're going to stream. It's going to be a powerful consecration service. And then we're going to be elevating those that are elects that have been faithful. And so we want you to remember uh, that date. We will be getting with leadership and also all of those that serve in any capacity of ministry, ushers, whoever does any level of ministry, you are going to uh, uh, be refreshed with the anointing. So we're excited about it. That's going to be uh, January the 15th at seven o'clock PM. It's gonna be a very powerful night that night of praise, of worship, of elevation, of promotion. This is the year of promotion, exposure, revitalization, restoration, and release. And release. Isn't God awesome? Well, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to come before you, to worship you, to praise you, and to exalt you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, because without him, there would be no us. We wouldn't be able to boldly come to the throne of grace. We honor you tonight. Thank you for every family, everyone that is connected to this moment. Thank you that this is the year of promotion, the year of increase. I thank you, Lord God, that tonight our prayers, more of your love, more of your agape for you, for ourselves, and for others. Father, we forgive others as you have forgiven us, and we move into all that you have for us in our future. And we thank you tonight for restoration, for revitalization. We thank you for a revival coming into our souls. Father, oh, how we love you. We bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Continue to pray tonight. Continue to worship. Mwah. Shalom. Be blessed.